Hey y'all. Um, occasionally folks will ask me for help with a file that they're having um, a particularly hard time with and um, in order to kind of get an idea for what they're trying to fix um, I'll ask them to go ahead and send me the file. And this is an example. Uh, I got this um, from a friend on the Gatton CNC Facebook group and he was having a problem with uh, joining some these vectors so that he could cut out an outside profile uh, and uh, just to give you an idea this is what he is trying to cut out um, he has these two arcs here joining the bottom part of the state of Michigan here to the top part and um, rather than cutting out two separate pieces and try to worry about hanging them he decided to make these arcs here and um, make this all one piece but still be able to carve this area here at the top of the uh, main portion of the state and this part down here on the island so then he also wanted to incorporate this banner uh, with this text right here in the center of it and the problem he was having back here in the vcarve file is this is a closed vector which is just fine and this is an open vector which is to be expected and once he added the banner here these became open vectors as well and then this is a closed vector well he was not able to join all of these vectors up into one outline file, outline vector, without eliminating portions that he needed uh, for this detail here, the banner and the, the text and everything else. So one of the things that I do when I first get a file, I, I do listen to the person and try to get a mental image of what they're trying to do and what they have. And But after that, one of the things I do is I do some investigating on my own. And like I'll come down here and I'll check the uh, text here. And these are all um, text objects, which is fine. I mean, they're going to be V-carved into, the, uh, uh, into the material here. And the same with these down here. But then I come up here and I click on these and I see that these are not, this is not a text object. And in fact, when I highlight the text, the banner also highlights. So I click off and I see the banner. If I click on the banner, the text highlights. So this is either, this is a, a separate object, a separate collection of vectors that must have been imported from something. And uh, I, I don't really know which, because if I come up here into my layer manager, looking for that telltale layer zero uh, meaning that it was imported from a DXF file I don't have a layer zero I do have a layer marked lettering and if I come over here to the light bulb and click on it and shut that layer off uh, this my text objects disappear so that's that's a good visual clue there my text objects and that little this little star here I see that they are on the lettering layer. Okay, that's all well and good, and that's terrific. Let me go ahead and close this layering letter. But what what I need to do to kind of help clean this up and get us on their way to fixing the problem is I need to ungroup these or convert them to curves. Now, if I come over here and I hit ungroup, then click off, it didn't it had no effect so that tells me that they're not a group the fact that the text is on the dotted lavender or pink lines also tells me that it's not a group so I'm gonna do a little bit more exploratory uh, investigation here with those vectors selected I'll go ahead and right click on them and I see that one of my choices is convert to curves now if I click over here on any of these others, right click, I don't have convert to curves. Convert to curves is grayed out. It's already a, uh, it's already a collection of curves. 
but these have not been converted to curves. So that's what I want to do with these to start, just to get it going here. So we'll convert these things to curves. Now I'll click off of it to deselect, come back, and now I can select the banner and each individual letter. Now, because this is, I want this to be treated as a text object, I'm going to go ahead and group these together, selecting all of it. And I'll come over here and I will group them. So now, this text is treated in the same way this text is up here. Now, I'm also, because he has a layer over here in the layer manager marked lettering, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this lettering to that layer as well, just for organization to kind of help me out a little further down the road. So let's go ahead and we got the text selected, the object selected. We'll right click and we will say move to layer lettering. Now, if I come up here into my layer manager, I can turn off all of the lettering and I'm only dealing with the vectors that I want to join. Now that was just for my convenience, that was just for uh, better organization. That still doesn't get us to the root of the problem which is how to join all of these layers to make that outside profile without losing the detail here, without losing the detail here. Well, um, the author of this file had a good start and that is over here in the layer manager by putting all of his lettering on one layer we are able to shut that off and not have to worry about it right now anything that we do won't affect this lettering so I'll close this layer manager and now we'll take it one step further and this is how we would handle this situation and cure the problem what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll select everything select all of our vectors that we want to combine to create our outside profile then right click and down here to the bottom we're gonna copy to layer new layer so we're gonna be creating another new layer and this one I'm going to name profile I'm gonna leave the drawing color as black I want to put a check mark here where it says new layer is visible and I want to put a check mark here in new layer is active. That makes this brand new layer the active layer. Any modifications I do will be happening on this new layer, not on the original. Then we'll click OK. And now if I zoom in, you can see that we have pink uh, dotted lines but we also have a black solid line. That means that not only is our new layer active and visible, but over here layer one is also visible. So let me go ahead and turn off layer one. So we've got lettering turned off, we've got layer one turned off. So the only thing we're looking at is our new profile layer. Then I can close the layer manager and now I can go in and I can just edit these as normal. I can grab my scissors and I'll make sure I put a check mark here in the rejoin trimmed sections and I can come up and I can clip this out, I can clip this out, I can clip this out, whoops, I, the whole thing disappeared on this side. Let's do hold down control hit Z to undo that last modification and close this. Now I'm going to have to go in and do a little bit of investigation and find out why this all disappeared when I tried to clip these. And chances are it's because this vector doesn't intersect this vector. So let's get in and sure enough we zoom in far enough we can see that this vector stops short of this one. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll select that vector to get it started. Then I'll type the letter N on my keyboard to go into node editing mode. And we see our green point here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor over that green point and I'm going to click and hold. And I'm going to drag that point down. Now you see if I move to the left or right, we can see the, the path 
way where the red square is, we can see the, that's the path the old vector takes. We want to line it up just so where it, they're covering one another. So we keep that same straight path, move it down below the vector I want to intersect, and release. So I've just stretched this vector here along the same direction. Now I can, I'm going to stay in node editing, I'm going to zoom out, and just to be sure, I'm going to zoom in down here and see if I've got the same situation, which I do. It does not intersect. So I'll click on this vector, and I have a black square here, and the same thing. I'm going to stretch, grab it and stretch it up here, and keep those lines lined up so I'm just stretching it not moving it in any other direction then release okay just to be on the safe side let's back out of here and go over and look at this side zoom in here we are we have intersected so we don't have to do anything here we can go up here now and take a look just to make sure that this is okay and I can see we have intersected so everything is fine so now I can type N again to get out of node editing mode and I will zoom out to selected to give us our full screen again come in and snip snip now I can close this and we have our outline we have our outside profile I can click on it anywhere and I see that we're still not joined. So I will select all of it, come over here to join open vectors. I have two open vectors. Now yeah, I've still got something going on. It still won't let me join. Okay, so let's go in and find out why. Where is, there is our problem. All right. I don't see the problem, so I'll select that vector, select this vector, right click, join close vectors by moving the endpoints. Now I have one closed vector. And let me trim this up too while I'm at it here. There we go. That's much better. Let me look down here where I connected these. Yeah, we're okay there. Zoom back out. Let's zoom in over here. Ah, over here's another problem, I see. We have the two vectors sitting side by side. We'll so snip that, which joined them. Then we'll come back in here, and these are joined. So now, if I close this, zoom to selected, we should have one closed vector. That was my problem, that corner down here. So, just to double check, we have one closed vector. Now, we're ready to calculate the toolpaths. I can come back over here turn on my lettering, turn on my layer 1, and we're ready to go ahead with finish the project. To do this, in this situation, what I would do is I would switch over to my toolpaths tab. I would select this text here. Because it's so small, what I think I'll do is I will use a 60 degree V-bit to cut these. That way I get a little bit of depth and, I, and my text isn't so shallow that I can't uh, do some sanding on it. And I'll do a normal V-carve. Uh, I won't put in a flat depth. I'll let the uh, bit decide what it wants to do. I've got a 60 degree V-bit selected already. I don't want to use a flat hour clearance tool. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and accept everything here. I'm just going to call it uh, 60 degree V carve. We'll calculate that toolpath and preview it. And there we go. That looks okay. Let me 
click here and zoom in a little bit that's going to give us some nice clean text there okay zoom back out now I'll close this we'll go back to our 2d view and I will select this vector hold down shift and select these I'm going to use a 90 degree V bit on these so we'll go back into V carve and I will select a 90 degree V bit and I'll accept everything here for purposes of this demonstration and I'm not going to put in a flat depth I'm not going to use a flat area clearance tool I'm going to accept everything else I'll just name this 90 degree V carve calculate that tool path and preview it there we go we've got nice broad text there our star isn't so deep that it's gouging its way into the material and I think that's gonna look just fine okay so we'll close this and now we come to a little bit of a a little bit of a decision to make um, I always like to do my profile tool paths last we can either cut the detail of the two islands and uh, or the two parts of the state rather and the banner we could cut it with an eighth inch um, end mill we could use a ball nose end mill I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do an outline of the entire of all of these vectors with a 90 degree V bit just to kinda of give it a little bit of interest along the edges now the way I'm gonna do this I'm gonna go back into my 2d view or excuse me back over here into my drawing tab get into my layer manager and I'm gonna turn off the profile toolpath that way I don't accidentally grab that or excuse me profile layer that way I don't accidentally grab the, uh, anything on that layer so I'll go ahead and I'll take these vectors here hold down shift select that one and select this one now I'm gonna go back over to my toolpath tab and I'm going to select a profile toolpath not a V carve I am however going to set my cut depth I'm gonna go ahead and set it for let's set it for a sixteenth of an inch 0625 and I'm going to make sure I got my show advanced toolpath options selected I'm going to choose a 90 degree V bit here again I'm going to go ahead and accept all my speed and feeds for purposes of this demonstration and I'm going to cut this on the vector so that the point the tip of that V bit is going to ride right on this vector okay I'm not going to do a separate last pass but I am going to ramp in my plunge moves with a smooth ramp over a distance of about an inch and what that will do is instead of my bit moving over to the starting point and just plunging straight down and start cutting an X moving an X and Y it will move over to the uh, starting point and then slowly drop its way into the material as it starts moving an X and Y at the plunge rate that is set for that tool and then once the bit has gone all the way into its cutting depth in this case uh, a sixteenth of an inch then it will take off at the normal feed rate so that saves a little bit of wear and tear on the tool it also removes any burning it it helps reduce burning uh, on the entry point of the bit and it also reduces chip out it's just something that I prefer to do um, I'm not going to change anything else here. Um, of course, it's it's we're not cutting all the way through, so I'm not going to worry about tabs. But I will change the name to Profile V Carve, and we'll calculate that toolpath. Then preview it. So what we've got now is we've got a nice 90 degree V carve, sixteenth of an inch deep 
all the way around the entire perimeter and I get that nice detail of the banner I get the nice detail here of the two halves of the state and everything looks nice alright now we'll close it <clears throat> and now we're gonna move into doing this profile I'm gonna show you an alternate method here uh, rather than going back and switching over here one thing that you do need to do however is you need to make sure all of your layers are turned on to use this method and that is we're going to associate this profile toolpath uh, this profile layer with the toolpath and we'll again we'll make sure in our profile manager that all the layers are turned on we'll go into our profile or our, our toolpath uh, tab and I'm going to select the profile toolpath. Now, I'm not really sure what the uh, thickness of the material this is uh, when the author of the file set it up in his job setup over here, but I want to cut all the way through the material plus two thousandths of an inch because I want to make sure it gets all the way through the material all the way around. So what I'm going to do up here in my uh, cut depth is I'm going to type Z plus point zero zero two. So that is the Z thickness plus two thousands. Then I will hit equals. And the minute I hit equals, it does the calculation and sets my depth of cut. I want to use see this is not so small that I need to go with an eighth inch bit so I can use a quarter inch end mill and I'll accept the feeds and speeds as they are click OK I'm okay with it going in six passes that's fine I wanna however machine this to the outside of the vectors I'll do a climb cut I when I whenever this is just for me whenever I um, do a profile cut I always use a separate last pass with an allowance of 0 0.01 what that does is on the first five passes of our sixth the bit is going to plunge in and it's going to cut to the outside of the vectors ten thousandths to the outside then on the final last on the separate last pass it will move in that ten thousandths and cut the entire outline on the vector in one pass that removes any of the steps that you see where from the alt going down each pass it removes any of those steps it removes any burning from the plunge moves and it just gives you a nice finish by removing ten thousandths of an inch around the entire profile um, tabs I am gonna add tabs will edit them here oh can't do that until I select the vectors we'll do that in just one second In fact let's do that right now we want to associate this toolpath with everything that's on my profile layer so we'll come down here to vector selection we'll select click the selector now what we want to do is we want to select all of the closed vectors on the profile layer only okay we're choosing all of the closed vectors on the profile layer then we want to associate with this toolpath then we'll click close now what it has done is it has selected everything on that profile tool uh, profile layer without selecting anything from layer one see I've got no selection going here I've got only the vectors that were on our brand new profile layer it's just another way that you can eliminate accidentally grabbing hold of an open vector from another layer 
is by associating the toolpath with this layer only. It's completely ignoring everything else. Okay? The main things to remember are are you selecting open vectors? Are you selecting the closed vectors? Then from there you can choose some of these choices. And you're selecting vectors on this selected vector only. You can choose more than one. But for this case I want to choose just the profile layer. Then we want to associate this layer with that toolpath. So if I have to come back in and change anything in the toolpath, it will remain associated with this layer only. And we'll hit close. Now I can come back and add tabs. I'm using a tab length of, now nah, that's not quite long enough. Let me make a 0.5 inch and I need to make these quarter inch tall tabs. We've added tabs to toolpath. I choose 3D tabs and I'll show you the difference in just a minute. Now let's go here and add tabs. Right now as it sits we have one tab here. Let's move that over here. I try to put my tabs on straight edges that are easy to cut with my saw wherever possible. We've got a semi straight up here. This is fairly straight right here. Um, and I think that will I think that'll be sufficient really they're half inch long and a quarter inch thick I don't think this is going to go anywhere but I'll put one right here just to be safe and another one down here that I can clean up with my oscillating spindle sander so we'll go ahead and we'll close that now I mentioned that I use 3D tabs you can just barely see here in this little drawing but when you open up vCarve you'll be able to see it. A normal tab your bit will cruise along until it gets to where a tab is supposed to be located then stop. Your Z will lift up out of the material to the tab height it'll move across the the length of the tab that you enter here then it will plunge back in and then carry on at whatever your uh, feed rate is. A 3D tab the bit does not stop when the bit gets up here to where the tab is supposed to start the Z will kick in and it will lift up as the X and Y axis are still moving until it gets to the thickness then it will plunge back down on the other side so your bit will slow down here but it will not stop and it leaves a triangular pyramid shape tab behind and your tab thickness will be the thickness in the center. So it's just a way to keep the bit moving. It might save only a few seconds on a toolpath like this, but those seconds add up over the course of the day. It may be the difference between cutting out six projects and cutting out seven or more. So with all that being said, I've got all of my settings the way I want them here. We will go ahead and we'll name this profile cut out. We'll calculate that toolpath. It's warning me that it's going to cut through the material which is exactly what I want it to do. We'll click OK. And now if we zoom in here on these toolpaths we can see that at first they're cutting way outside. That's OK it's going to move in that tenth of an inch, or excuse me, that ten thousandths when it's finished. So let's go ahead and preview the toolpath. And here we go. And on the final pass it went in, click, it went in and it cut right around that vector, right along the edge in one pass. But we can also still see a little bit of a bevel right there on the edge from our V-bit. We've kept our detail here and here. Zoom back out a little bit. We've got nice V clean V-carving and our tabs are in such a place to where we can cut them out easily without a lot of heartache and heartbreak. So I can clean that up with the oscillating spindle sander 
and this one here as well. So, and there is our finished project set and ready for us to close here and save G-code. So, basically put, the, hopefully the takeaway you'll get from this is if you're having trouble joining toolpaths or joining vectors without getting rid of a bunch of detail, go ahead and copy those vectors to a new layer. Then you can join those vectors without worrying about losing any of that detail. Um, that's what layers are meant for. They're, they're meant there to be an organizational tool for you so that you can keep track of everything, you can organize everything, and you can more easily accomplish what it is you're setting out to do. So, you know, use them to your advantage. Well, that's it. Um, I hope you got something out of this video. Uh, if you did, please give me a thumbs up down there below. They really do make a difference. That's my main source of feedback as to whether I'm doing a good job or not. Uh, if you'd like to follow along with me and um, keep track of what I'm doing here, um, consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, uh, look right next to that subscribe button and you'll see a uh, little bell. Click on that bell symbol and set your notifications. Uh, you'll be notified every time I uh, upload a video. Now whether you do any of that or not, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch my video here and y'all take care.